I've been asked what accommodations I need and I feel like I don't because I'm asked so well, I'm not sure if I do need it. It's just super common for folks that made it all the way to adulthood without being diagnosed. You've learned how to accommodate all those weaknesses. Sometimes we're not accommodating our weaknesses, just masking them. And yes, there is a difference. And if you're learning to unmask and thinking, mm, do I need this? I don't know if I need it, but it would make my life easier. That's what an accommodation is. Especially if the thing that would make your life easier would actually make your life a lot less exhausting. If you're exhausted, you're masking. Now I'm gonna give you some examples of accommodations for ADHD and autism. There's tons, so take whatever you need. If one doesn't seem for you, that's cool. Just some examples. Being told ahead of time the key points to a meeting. That way you can mentally prepare for anything you wanna add and potential questions you're gonna be asked. Also having the minutes of that meeting emailed to you after. That way you have a copy of everything that was spoken about. Having anything that your manager is asking of you put in writing. Having an email to you or in one place so you're not gonna forget it. More to the point when you do forget it, you know where to look for it again. Asking for a day or two to work from home. Huge save on energy. Being allowed to get up and walk around and wriggle rather than sit in the chair like a rigid zombie all day. Honestly, that should be allowed for everyone. It's really a human accommodation, that one, but especially important for the spicy brains. Being able to dress in a comfortable way. This can become a little bit tricky if you've got a uniform, but being allowed to alter that in some way just so it's less choky or whatever. Technology assists like readers, especially with comorbids like dyslexia, they can be a real help. Along the same line with a reader, having someone proofread any sort of professional document you have to put together. If you work in an office, having a more comfortable space to sit rather than a loud, open plan, bright light, no air room. Having your schedule move. If you're less of a nine to five person and maybe you're an early morning person or a late person, having that flexibility. Now, why would your workplace say yes to any of this? Employee loyalty is a big one. A loyal and happy employee is a productive employer. They'll be more invested in their work if they're happy because you give them that sort of flexibility. And that workplace will be recognized as a place that looks after and supports their employee. I hope this helps. I'll be going into more detail about the accommodations that you can ask for and what you can expect in my cult. It's on Patreon. Sign up and have a look.